What we found after five years of researching read through these 23 initiatives is that there is a mix of hope but also considerable grounds for concern. You might say that it's in a period of stagnation. There has been an, a lot of initiative and creativity and a, adaptation under constraints. But in terms of the urgent need for the forest sector to contribute meaningfully and early to climate change mitigation, we are not there yet. The essential obstacle that RED is facing right now is that we continue to live in a world where those who have interest in converting forest to non-forest uses have the upper hand in land use decisions. Um, this goes back centuries. In a way, it makes sense. Um, but what it is, is that we're living through a continuation of a situation where forests have been a sacrificial biome. They make room for population growth, for agricultural development, extension of livestock, infrastructure, etc., uh, which all makes sense. But in the age of dangerous climate change, uh, we can no longer afford this. Uh, Subnational RED is the proof of concept. Uh, RED is a lot about uh, changing policies and incentives at the policy level, whether national or international. But ultimately, what RED aims to do is on the ground, in the villages, across the landscape, in the forests. And that's why subnational initiatives are so important. They are the, essentially the laboratory where the RED experiment is being carried out. And this is where we're going to learn what's going right, what's going wrong, and what needs to be corrected. We need a breakthrough. Um, we're living in a situation where we absolutely have to aim, um, as a species, to stay within this two degree increase limit. Uh, the cause is urgent. Um, the reasons why the forest sector is a very important um, um, early approach to climate change mitigation. It's, it's, it's rather obvious. Um, and yet we are not moving forward in, in the way that, that we should be. Uh, so what do we need? It would help tremendously if we were to have a binding international climate change agreement in Paris in, in 2015. Why? Because it would be a dramatic statement, policy statement, invigorating efforts to move ahead on finances, on tenure, on scale, on MRV, on safeguards, and on every other challenge that MRV faces. So there needs to be a, a policy tipping point that matches the biological tipping point that we're experiencing right now. Um, in order for that to happen, we need to have people um, civil society voice their concerns about climate change, inform themselves, and understand that forest-based climate change mitigation is an option, but it's only a realistic option if um, there is a groundswell of civic concern that puts pressure on, on politicians, on governments, and exerts from the ground up the political will that's necessary for RED to become what it was meant to be.